A little while ago, I bought these 1802s from eBay, from China, obviously. They were reasonably cheap, but it's very clear, if you look at them, these all have really, really nice tops. Um, they all have the same part number and Harris logo and date code. Um, but the bottom is completely different and looks really quite shabby. And um, has different date codes and uh, different uh, countries of origin um, printed on there. So... It's clear that these are so-called black top chips, and what they do is basically they um, heat up the circuit board, the recycling circuit board, and then they smash the chip out, like by put, by just hammering it on a flat surface, um, and then they grind away the top surface and uh, put a new silk screen on there. This is unfortunate because for the price that they are offering this, I'd happily buy untested recycled chips if I had the original part number on there so you can at least see what the uh, speed grade uh, is and I mean even even these you it's very clear that you have to test them anyway because they don't test them I mean this could be anything um, in there it, it ranges from them just taking a package of the appropriate size and just relabeling it um, to what well, I think what they did in this um, case, them just sorting them all 1802s in one bucket and then just printing this one. But yeah, I'd happily buy recycled chips with the original marking for the same price. This is just annoying because um, you're losing information that way. And I mean, the chips don't get any better. Um, just because they have a nice shiny black top. So what we really need is a way to test these. And while there are a couple other solutions out there, what I really like is the Retro Shield project. The Retro Shield is just a simple Arduino shield by someone whose name I can't pronounce, but whose website, um, as you can see it here, 8bitforce.com, I'll link in the description. And this is great because this takes an 1802 chip and it connects it to an Arduino Mega. And there's a ton of pre-written software that you can just test your chip with or do other stuff. And what the Arduino does, it basically it emulates the memory and I.O. Well, memory is I.O., but basically the memory and control signals for the chip. And it gives you an easy serial interface too. So I got a couple of these boards made. And this is how it looks populated. Great thing about this is that it's open source hardware too. So you can just get yourself boards made. Um, or you could just buy it from his official store. So there's relatively little components out on here except for a couple decoupling caps and a couple resistors. One thing that you have to keep in mind, and it, it's also written on the schematic that's uh, freely available, you have to short this R8 thing here and not populate R7 for this particular version, which is revision B here. Um, so let's plug this into the Arduino and see how this all works. So... Another thing to notice that this goes in that way. I first had it the other way around. Like so. Um, but that obviously doesn't work. And I caught it before I turned it on. Because you'd probably damage the chip if you turned it on um, the other way around. So this goes in that way. And then the chip basically goes in here. And 
And then you just connect it to your computer. And we'll switch to a screen capture now and see what it does if connected to a computer and if you upload the appropriate program here. So this is the Arduino window and I've downloaded the appropriate package from the GitLab that is provided on the website already. And there's a couple different programs in here. I, cho I chose the RCA basic version 3. And all you've got to do now is um, connect the Arduino. It says on the board you should program the Arduino first, then plug in the board. So that's what we're going to do. So plug in the, Ardu the Arduino, which obviously you can't see, but I did it. Choose the right um, things here, and then just upload it to the board. It will take a second. And then I plug in the shield. Um, open up the serial monitor. You could probably do this with whatever serial terminal emulator you'd want to use. Um, I just used this one, um, the built-in Arduino one. Because this is, um, it's not that complicated an operation. If I wanted to do, do anything more complex, I'd probably switch to another um, terminal emulator. But uh, for this, it will do fine. So it tells us a bunch of configuration stuff, um, and it says hit enter to start monitor code. And this is where I actually hit the first snag, because I was pressing enter, and it didn't work. And I was just pressing send. What you have to do is basically type enter, and then send. And then it will start up the serial monitor. And then you have a couple different options here. If you just type B and send that, then it will give you the RCA version 3 basic. And you can already see at this point that the chip is working because the serial monitor program is starting up and it wouldn't do that if the chip were damaged. So this is already a good sign. There's two options here, cold or warm start. Um, cold means it basically clears the memory. And we're going to send this. There's a very helpful PDF file in the download, but you can also find it on the internet if you um, search for RCA 1802 basic um, free. And that just tells you some basics about the language and what the different things mean, like the cold start, warm start, uh, that sort of thing. So if we look at this manual here, we can see um, some basic information about um, this and that's all great. Then it tells us the serial format which is very important and then it basically explains what um, this program prints and especially what uh, ready means and when we have to enter code and also about the cold start and warm start. And then it goes into um, functions and the like. And what we'll do is we'll just get this and we'll just put it into our serial program here. So if you look at this, it basically tells us that it's ready. And we've got the command up here. And this should give us the absolute value of this, which is minus 10 by multiplied by 2, the absolute value of that should be 20, if I'm not mistaken. And we'll send this. And it takes a while to arrive. And then it takes even longer for the process actually to make the calculations because it's running reasonably slow through the Arduino. And then we get back 20. And that's great because that tells us our chip is working. I mean, you could write a more complex program to test it, but for now... As a quick test, I'm fairly certain if it runs a monitor program and it does math, then it should be fine. So 
The only thing I was left to do is basically to do this to all of these chips and then give each of them a little check mark and put this on the top of the chip so that I know that it's actually good. So we are back at the bench with the chips and to my utter astonishment, all of the ones I got seem to work fine. That is quite a good yield. From what other people have written on the subject, you're usually lucky to get about 70% working. But, I mean, it's all dependent on chance and probably the guy actually recycling the boards. Um, but all of mine seem to work reasonably well. At least they work with the monitor program, so... I think I'll be happy with that. And maybe in the future we'll build some projects with the 1802. But uh, I'll probably do some Z80 stuff before that. For which, there's, by the way, there's also a retro shield for the Z80. So if you ever want to test some uh, Z80s or just write some uh, basic... I don't know what software is actually available for this, but um, I bet there is some. And you can just play around with this. I mean, it's very simple to set up. And it's fun. So, yeah, you can definitely do that.